Well, hello everybody. This is Daniska, and welcome to a video different than any I've made before. So normally in the past I've done like highlight videos and zombie clips, and little tips and tricks, stuff like that. I never really made an extended comprehensive video. So today I'm going to do that. I'm going to try and make one about multiplayer. Black Ops 3 versus Black Ops 4 and kind of point out some of the differences between them and then some of the things that I think that Black Ops 4 could do better with possible updates or maybe it can't. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Leave a like if you enjoy it. It's going to be a long one but hopefully something fun. And let's just really get into it. So I guess one of the first things I would talk about BO3 versus BO4 is loading up the game, you go into the menu and you've got all this different stuff that you can pick like BO3 we're talking about nightmares or bonus mode we've got campaign zombies I'm not gonna really touch on zombies today even though some people would probably like to see it not today um, but, but wait, let's go ahead into multiplayer which normally will be public match be what we go for and we're gonna go over to create a class and this is where I think some of the differences between the two games really start to stand out all right, so in create a class, one of the first things you're going to see is creating your gun. And yeah, there's some really big differences between the games. Black Ops 3 starts out with lots and lots of guns. I believe there's like six SMGs, seven ARs. We've got like four snipers, four shotguns, a whole bunch of secondaries. Basically, there's a lot of different options to pick from. And then later on in the game's life, they added more guns progressively over the next two years. So you have quite a huge weapon. I believe there's over 70 weapons total in Black Ops 3 that you can use secondaries and primaries combined. And that's pretty significant because it really gives you kind of like this um, big option pool to pick from. So you can experiment with lots of different weapons and combinations of perks and stuff. BO3 has a very enhancement, I guess, style to attachments. BO3 has most of the same attachments available for all the weapons in the category, so for example, fast mag, extended mag, long barrel, you know, laser, etc. And the idea of Black Ops 3's attachments is to enhance your gun. So you can make your gun a little bit better at what it's already good at. Like the Peacekeeper would be really good with stock because it already has good, good like strafe speed so you do even better with that. Um, basically the, the attachments are just there to enhance your guns and make them better Black Ops 4 takes a really different approach to it there's a lot less guns to begin with there's like 5 SMGs, 5 ARs, 3 tactical rifles which would basically be an AR in Black Ops 3 4 snipers, they're right and then like 2 shotguns which are actually bundled as secondaries and a whole bunch of other stuff. They've really changed it up. There's generally less weapons though. And Black Ops 3's enhancement style of attachments isn't really kept with Black Ops 4 because Black Ops 4 has like crutch attachments for lack of a better word. One of their focuses was making the weapons feel really different by having different attachment options. They did that but some of the weapons are missing really basic stuff like stock being missing from the Rampart assault rifle and uh, the ICR assault rifle and quick draw missing from the rampart as well and instead you get replacements like high caliber and high caliber 2 which high caliber would normally be like a headshot high caliber 2 decreases the number of shots to kill on the body so t attachments like that kind of start to become crutch attachments there's also things like operator mods which they introduced in black ops 4 which basically they change your gun in a big way like the Titan LMG's got like this oppressor mod that shakes the screen for enemies, make it harder for them to aim back at you. The SG-12 some, uh, shotgun, I should say, which is kind of like the Brecci, has a strobe light mod, which blinds people. The, some of these attachments are kind of crutches and pretty much required to have on your weapon if you want to be able to compete with them. So that's something that they did really different with the creative class in Black Ops 4. And it kind of feels like by adding these specialized attachments and stuff, they basically reduce your options and kind of try and narrow things down for you. So while you technically have freedom to go for other attachments in your class, 
there's certain ones that are just so much better that you're basically forced to play with those attachments for your gun to be viable to compete with everybody else. So you have a lot less options. Like they try to make you feel like you've got options, but you really don't. You need to focus on these couple ones, otherwise you're going to get wrecked. So that's kind of something that's a little different between them. Um, Black Ops 3 also has weapon attachment variants. So when you put on like a quick draw grip on your gun, you have a different variant you can get from the black market which will make the gun look a little different. Black Ops 4 doesn't have that, instead it has signature weapons which change the way, the way the weapon looks by quite a bit and also includes some different camos. So yeah, that's one of the difference. But with Black Ops 3's base game, I'm pretty sure there's already more diversity than Black Ops 4. And um, balance is definitely a lot better too, though I'll say this early on, this is Black Ops 4 after being out like two months versus Black Ops 3 after being out for three years. So of course there's going to be more fine tuning experience in the older game. Let's talk about Bl uh, Black Ops 4 and Black Ops 3's perks. So Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 4 both have perks that you can equip in your creative class. And Black Ops 3, generally there's a lot more perks. Not that many more I guess if you count up the total number, but it's noticeable. And the perks, those are kind of more important than attachments because they really affect how the game feels for you. Things like um, having awareness on is noticeable or having hardwired on where you won't trigger trip mines and stuff like that. Those come in kind of clutch. You got these different perks. Ghost as well this is significantly better in Black Ops 3. It keeps you off the radar when UAVs are constantly being spammed. So they've got all these different perks. Black Ops 4 also has perks, but they've removed some of the perks or combine them with other ones and they've had this new equipment thing which is like it's like five different things you can have which are kind of perks or would have been perks in previous games that now have to take this special equipment slot and they're very important um they got a couple different ones they have like a comsec device that's supposed to reduce the amount of time it takes to earn score streaks with points and then they have like equipment charge to charge your equipment faster like um, th these ones are kind of important but there's two of them that really stands out there's a stim shot one which is probably one of the most overpowered things in the game where you can pretty much instantly regenerate all your health and it recharges really fast and then you've got acoustic sensor which is like a blend of awareness from black ops 3 along with sixth sense it's kind of a stupid thing it's really it's pretty powerful but completely negated, almost completely negated by Dead Silence perk, which makes Dead Silence a crutch perk in that game. But yeah, basically there's three perks in Black Ops 4 which seem to reign supreme. Uh, Scavenger, because of the amount of health everybody has, we'll talk about that later. Um, Gung Ho, because that perk now basically lets you get out of sprint really fast and aim down sights, which is really important, especially for guns that don't have quick draw. And then, dead silence because it completely ruins this acoustic sensor which is one of the better options in the game. So basically Black Ops 4 aims a little bit more towards narrowing down and having more crutch perks and stuff. Despite whatever Vonderhaar might say, it feels like the game is very focused on trying to direct you into picking certain things or else get wrecked. So let's talk about equipment as well. I know Black Ops 4 has this other equipment, but I'm talking more about like grenades and stuff like that. Black Ops 3 has quite a couple options, separated by tactical and lethal. Black Ops 4 has a little bit less to go with, and where it gets really different is special issue. So in past in the past game, the specialists would have just had their ability or um, their weapon that you could pick before the game started. Black Ops 3 has a weapon and an ability or both like a really powerful one and then a less powerful one and the less powerful one replaces grenades and stuff like that and doesn't cost any creative class slots which basically is a requirement in your gameplay now because it's such a good advantage so it kind of limits you to use whichever one your specialist has otherwise it costs you a point of creative class to add like another frag grenade or something to it alright so let's talk about some of the other things here customization Camos. You can earn camos by headshots or by doing weapon specific challenges in both games. Black Ops 4 and Black Ops 3 both have some pretty decent ones that you can earn as part of the regular game. That's not my main focus today though. 
There's a couple ones that are pretty good, like Dark Matter, which is in both games. I personally think the Black Ops 3 one is a lot better. I don't have an actual image to show of the other one, but it's out there you know, if you go look. Um, Black Ops 4 changed a little bit by adding reactive camos, which are things like um, double kills, triple kills, streaks, kill streaks of bloodthirsties or more that change your, how your gun looks a little bit, which is kind of cool, but... I don't know. Some of them are hard to get, like a 30 kill one for the nuclear, which you'd get for your Dark Matter. So those are all right, but then you've got DLC camos, and I, I believe camos are some of the most important things as far as customization, because in a first-person shooter game, you're not really going to get to see your character much, but you'll see your gun in your hand all the time. So the camo you have is really, really important to have a nice-looking camo, because it's what you're going to see all the time. Um, the DLC ones that were introduced in Black Ops 3 via... Um, black market and by limited time camo events where it would be available for like one week in supply drops those ones are pretty pretty nice looking we've got some good ones like into the void and cherry fizz that are better personal favorites those are very rewarding and they're enjoyable to use black ops 4 really doesn't have those any kind of real limited camos or black market camos except for the signature weapons which have their own special camos and that's about it so let's also talk about specialists while we're at it. Specialists. Black Ops 3 specialists have a lot more outfits and they generally look more distinct and nice as opposed to Black Ops 4's ones. There's a lot more color, there's some really different cool styles like a Pharaoh style for the Outrider here in Black Ops 3, Phoenix, um, there's like a Spiderweb one, there's different different styles and outfits for every character distinct there's a couple outfits that are shared and if there are, and there are also earnable ones that you can earn through doing challenges culminating in a gold hero gear that all specialists can earn so we got some different stuff like that that's pretty cool black ops 4 only really allows you to earn stuff through the black market and a lot of them aren't that really good looking and then there's a couple more that you can pay money for to earn by doing challenges but you have to pay extra money extra cod points to earn these um abilities or I guess I shouldn't say abilities these outfits for your specialists and that's not very cool because a lot of people like me don't want to spend money on them then we also have taunts so Black Ops 4 has taunts that you can equip that are in the menu and you can use them mostly in blackout they don't really seem to be that special Black Ops 3 has a different take on taunts though which will let you use them in the winner's circle, which we'll talk about really soon. Um, but you'll get to use them at the end of the day. There'll be lines that your character will say if you win at first place, and then there'll be little gestures you can use from any first to second to third place uh, placing, and you can show off your outfit, your weapon, and your little expression, whatever, want you, whatever little expression you want to do. So the winner's circle is pretty good. You don't really get to see that except in Black Ops 4, when you're starting up, then you'll get to see the other people's characters and see what you look like with your outfit. All right, so let's let's talk about the black market now since it's come up. Black Ops 3, as everybody knows, has this infamous supply drop system. So you have to pay for these crates that you can earn with crypto keys by playing the game. Simple, straight rewards for playing. And then you can also spend COD points to buy and spin the crates. The crates are random. They have chances of getting different loot, different rarities, and if you have something you already got and you get it again, then you can spin into a duplicate like reserve, which gives you more crypto keys. So that's pretty good. Um, the stuff is pretty random, which has made there to be some controversy in Black Ops 3, because when DLC guns come out, which I'll talk about again really shortly, you're not guaranteed to get them. Black Ops 4 removes this and has like a progression system with tiers which funnily enough kind of comes to the same thing because it's random items every tier and you get them with time spent playing the game so it is pretty similar to the supply drops but it doesn't feel quite as random for whatever reason um specialist outfits we talked about them there's also some ridiculous sales aside from the specialist outfits themselves where they like to sell like twenty dollars for two signature weapons they already had that in black ops 4 complete ripoff do not recommend um, camos I haven't really put them out but for Black Ops 3 you can also get 
weapon specific camos in the black market so the original guns that are in the game before DLC have a whole bunch of extra camos you can get for them that are not available for DLC guns overall the black market content and updates really helped Black Ops 3 maintain player interest very well throughout its life and you'll see that as you play the game if you do play Black Ops 3 that it really gets nice to unlock different guns that you didn't have before like fan favorites such as the AN94 and um, Galil, the MSMC, the Olympia shotgun. There's a whole bunch of really good guns that are all available. They're kind of good to keep people's interest up available through the black market. So now that we've talked about all this different stuff, um, I would say between the two tier systems, I actually prefer Black Ops 3's one because the stuff is much better, but it does feel very random and it might take you a long time to get your stuff. But the stuff does feel a lot more rewarding to get at this point. Let's talk about gameplay, too. There's a lot to talk about. Well, first, let's talk about the maps, I guess. Once you actually start playing, you'll, you can go through the list of maps for each game. So you got a whole bunch of different maps for Black Ops 3. There's Fringe, Redwood, Hunted, Combine, Infection. There's a lot of maps that are pretty memorable and that people all really enjoyed playing on. Black Ops 4's... Not so much. There's the four remake maps from previous Black Ops games, which have the notorious firing range that everybody likes to play on. Um, both games do have Nuketown at this point as well. And most people don't seem to think that the Black Ops 4's original maps really compare to Black Ops 3's original maps. And there's more original ones in Black Ops 3 as well. The maps in Black Ops 3 look nice and clear and vibrant. Black Ops 4, I haven't really been impressed by the graphics yet. But that's not all there is to a map, besides how it looks. Another thing that makes a map popular or good is going to be how it flows. So we're, we'll talk a little bit now about the, game, uh, the gameplay loop and uh, what that really comes out to be. So Black Ops 3's maps have a whole lot of different styles that go into making them. They have normal ground running movement, they've got water where you can swim. They also have a 3D movement system with jetpacks which lets you jump really high compared to previous schemes and allows you to jump over things that would have been barriers before, jump on top of things to use them as like a little platform to shoot from. You can wall run which is pretty cool because it allows for some different traversal options for the map. Generally pretty fluid and while the maps are normally three lane like most, tra like most uh, traditional Treyarch maps the Black Ops 3 map selection doesn't feel like strict three lane map gameplay because of all the different movement options. And basically what that ends for and that what that means for us is that map traversal in Black Ops 3 is a lot better because you can get around and you're not stuck to a simple one path through the middle of the map or to each side. You can mix and match a little bit. It's a lot harder for people to camp or to aim down sight watching the flank because of all the options of movement. A lot easier to flank people, shoot them in the back, and that makes the game a lot more aggressive and less camp friendly. That's not the only thing about it though, but the aggressive part of Black Ops 3 is definitely something that's fun and that's good. The gameplay loop I've talked about already has thrust jumping as part of its basic core design. So it's kind of similar to Black Ops 2 where you just shoot and stuff, but as is normal for a shooter game. But the jetpacking that Black Ops 3 introduced is pretty good. It's limited, you can't go that high, but it allows you to mix up your movement a lot. And like I said, it makes it faster because you can get around more quickly and have a lot more lanes that you can move through because of that. The thrust jumping will keep you in the action faster and it allows also for longer gunfights sometimes because you can jump around while you shoot and it allows for some clutch moments with multi kills which is pretty nice it gives you a sense of accomplishment when you're comfortable jumping around or avoiding or you did a really good play using the wall running another thing that also helps the game to have a good fast movement play and a good gameplay loop is the time to kill the time to kill in Black Ops 3 is pretty fast it's like three bullets for most guns or four bullets depending upon the gun and the range and of course you can one shot with a shotgun or sniper in certain cases or two shot with different weapons like the Shiva basically leaving for 
for nothing really like anything missing as far as how fast the game can be played everything's fast black ops 4 is very different than that we'll talk about that shortly but i do like the the quick time to kill because it allows you to clutch and to do pretty quick aggressive gameplay lone wolf play is possible in black ops 3 as well it works pretty well you can also work with your teammates closely but if you don't have any good teammates which happens a lot there's really no punishment for it besides the enemy team getting constantly fed more streaks but you can clutch a lot better and you're at no huge disadvantage as opposed to black ops 4 like we'll talk about soon any specialists can be used at any time by anyone and while the specialists are noticeable in black ops 3 they aren't too intrusive to gameplay as players must choose ability or weapon and they cannot really be spammed besides for the ripper which you can get like every two or three kills and it doesn't last very long shotgun snipers melee pretty much all weapon classes are also viable in the right situation and the movement allows for there to be a lot more situations like snipers jumping high to snipe over things shotgunners wall jumping and wall running to get up close there's basically just a whole lot of different options available all weapon classes for the most part have some use which is pretty nice and it allows for a lot of freedom and creativity in how you want to play the game and what kind of weapon classes you want to use another cool little thing I thought I'd mention before I finish talking about BO3 is the no loss for joining session in progress if your team's losing if there's 10 kills left you're okay if you take a loss because it won't count as a loss because you didn't really lose that game if you just showed up at the end also the final kill cam for the black ops 3 game is so much better than the play of the game that's in black ops 4 and it ends right there at the winner's circle where you can then show off whatever stuff you've earned and let everybody see your cool specialist outfits show off your emblem whatever you've made basically pretty nice and you can kind of feel proud of the stuff that you've done to customize all right so let's talk a little bit about black ops 4 here and some of these differences i'm bringing up black ops 4 basically i would say it tries to eliminate a lot of the options and creativity that's allowed and create a class and all that stuff by encouraging team campaign and teamwork close teamwork and basically more slow and cautious gameplay it works a lot better in black ops 4 to stick close to your team to constantly communicate and to use your stuff t together kind of like a overwatch push from treyarch it's it's good in some ways but it really punishes you if your teammates are bad or if you want to play by yourself they also did some other changes that i don't really like in black ops 4 including the minimap being changed and adding a fog of war thing to it so with fog of war you can't really see clearly most of the map unless one of your teammates is looking at something you can see it on the minimap that's it i don't find that fog of war really adds anything meaningful to the game and it makes it frustrating to try and keep an eye on the minimap another thing that treyarch did with the minimap is <laughs> they removed the hater score streak which is basically like a improved uav and they've had it in different forms in the past couple games allowing you to see every enemy on the minimap and what direction they're looking really really nice reward lets you go and push the enemies go on the aggressive after you've gone on a streak lets you continue the streak they've removed this apparently because they don't think that it would work with recon the specialist that lets you vision pulse and share your vision pulse with your teammates it's kind of like they're trying to force you to use recon specialist all the time which I don't really like as in addition to trying to force you to play with your team all the time forcing you to use certain weapon attachments and perks I, I find it very restricting and I don't like the fact that the hater was removed um, some other changes they did too I mean I'm just gonna really touch on the surface here 100 assist points per kill if, so if you shoot somebody with one bullet and your teammate finishes them off you get 100 points toward your next score streak instead of 25 or 15 or whatever that you would have gotten in previous games um certain classes of weapons like shotguns and smgs are pretty weak in comparison to assault rifles and lmgs in black ops 4 basically promoting a more long-ranged campy kind of play style aiming down line of sights not very aggressive and fast play so <laughs> shotguns in particular took a big a big big fall which to me is kind of annoying because I like using shotguns. 
and like a lot of people have already complained too about SMGs. There's like one or two viable ones, and that's pretty much it. On a side note, something I will say that is pretty nice about Black Ops 4 is that the streaks, the lethal streaks, are better than Black Ops 3's ones. With Black Ops 3 just being dominated by Hater, Wrath, I'm sorry, Wraith, and Raps. So, I guess we talked about a lot of different stuff here. I personally feel like Black Ops 3 multiplayer is a lot more fun to play because of its fast pace and a lot more rewarding to play as well because of the skill ceiling with the boost jumping being a thing. Not that I want it to be in every Call of Duty, but it did feel a little bit more comfortable and fun to play once you got used to it. But something else that I really liked about Black Ops 3 that I felt Treyarch did really well was have player retention by adding little updates. And most of the stuff that you can earn, like the stuff in the black market on Black Ops 3, feels really good to earn. Like, you feel great when you unlock a new weapon or when you finish a new specialist outfit that you'd wanted for quite a while. There's usually something to grind for until you've played the game for a really long time, and the events that they did throughout the game's life kind of helped keep that interest up. So far, Black Ops 4 is still pretty new. It's been about two months since it came out, and it was released in a pretty bad condition, not ready for release. And it's missing a lot of things that should have been in there, like a combat record that will let you see all your weapon stats. And it's missing unlockable outfits for your own special characters by just playing the game normally. But there's a whole bunch of things that they could do that would really, really improve the game and make it get to a point where it'd be a lot more fun to play. Because right now I don't feel very interested to play it at all. And I like multiplayer Call of Duty. And I like Treyarch multiplayer from having grinded Black Ops 2 by like whew, so many days and Black Ops 3 as well to unlock all the guns without buying any COD points. So there's a couple things I think that they should do or could do better in Black Ops 4 in no particular order. Uh, bring back the hater. I think that that streak is really really rewarding and fun and I think people deserve it after they've been on a long gun streak. Now if they do that they should remove the hundred assist points per kill that you get if you tag somebody with one bullet and your teammate finishes them. I think they would be better off going back to the original 20 or 50 points depending upon how much damage that they do before your teammate gets the kill. Um, make better black mark content. The outfits right now we have, they suck in Black Ops 4. Black Ops 3's ones are right there for easy comparison. I don't know where Treyarch lost their way, but they should go back to making these kind of outfits. And better camos too that you can get in the black market to put on all your guns like Black Ops 3 just like those cool limited time ones really nice looking camos while we're at it stop making people have to spend COD points to unlock specialist outfits with no other way to do it make some kind of in-game currency that you earn or something so that people can can earn the weapons or weapon variants um, earn the camos, earn everything without having to spend more money on it. We've already paid $60 for the game if you didn't even buy any DLC. There's no reason I should have to pay more money if I'm one of the regular players and I just want to be able to use that outfit. It's not worth $6 to me. Make it available for me to earn another way. If I want to pay $6 for it, fine, but don't force it. Or don't, don't make it limited only to that. I should already have access to it because I bought the game. Um, give me a way to show off the stuff that I can get, like the outfits and the camos and all that stuff. Give me another way to show them off besides when the team is spawning in where only my teammates can see me. Bring back the winner's circle at the end of the game so that players can show off their taunts, expressions, um, stickers, outfits, weapons, weapon variants, whatever other thing we've got. Bring back the winner's circle so that everybody gets to see the stuff that you've unlocked, so it feels rewarding. Add limited time free camos or suits. Things that encourage players to show up regularly to play. They did one little thing for zombies where they have a couple face paints that you can't even use with all of the outfits in the game. Stuff like that would be helpful to do and regularly. Good stuff too, not bad stuff. Another thing, add DLC guns. Not cosmetics, but actual guns like Black Ops 3 has. They should be available to be unlocked organically and without having no chance to really get them. Like maybe have them unlocked at tier 100 
in the black market or something like that. Something that all players have a reasonable chance to go for. But unique weapons that are balanced and fun to use will really, really make the game a lot more fun to play. And by the way, while we're at it, add weapon variants, weapon camos, and stuff like that to Blackout. Just a side note. Another thing for multiplayer, make better maps. And not just remakes or remasters of previous ones, but make actual new maps that are better. So far, the maps that are in Black Ops 4 do not impress. I haven't seen a single game, a single map in the whole game where I'm like, oh my gosh, that is a legendary map. Haven't seen one. Black Ops 2 has them, like Standoff, Raid. Black Ops 3 has some pretty memorable ones too. Hunted, Fringe, like maps like that. Maps of that quality are stuff that need to be made originally for Black Ops 4. Make better maps. Balance the weapons better, or remove crutch attachments, or add more create a class, um, I guess, picks. Maybe have like 12 picks per class or something instead of 10. Basically just make it so that we're not so limited to be forced onto using high caliber and high caliber 2, or rapid fire and high caliber, or operator mod plus fast mags, or whatever it is for certain weapons. Make them so that attachments aren't so crutchy, like attachments and make it a little bit more I don't know less required to play a particular way balance the perks don't make it so that all the perks are required from dead silence to scavenger to gung-ho to be able to compete make it so the perks are a little bit more diverse and add stuff like hardwired so you can slip through mesh mines without being detected things like that you know things that will add a little bit of and predictability to the options in the game because right now there's really not many. Um, side comment as well, nerf the stim shot. That thing is a little bit too strong. It regenerates too fast or it builds your health up, your health up too quickly. There's got to be another way than just that because you can put six bullets into somebody and have them survive and be around the corner again at full health in about two seconds, ready to shoot at you while you're still healing. All right, another one, make special issue equipment cost create a class slots or regular equipment not cost anything. So where these special grenades, cluster grenades or whatever are, make them cost the same as a regular grenade but only be available for the battery. Little things like that so that there's an actual reason to try more options. Because right now any player who decides to use anything other than special equipment is getting punished in Black Ops 4. No reason to use anything else. Um, and yeah, another small side note too. Fix being able to spam the same map over and over. Black Ops 3 had this issue and they fixed it, so you had to only pick the same map one time for a replay before you could move on to another one if you really wanted that map. Just little things like that would also make a big difference. But yeah, this is basically the end of my video. This is a long one. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the gameplay, the comments. Um, my opinions, if you've got any opinion of your own, feel free to post them up there um, in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking about. If there's anything you miss or things that you think that they could have done better that they used to do in other Call of Duties besides Black Ops 3 that they should bring back for BO4, feel free to go ahead and put them in there. If you like the video, make sure to like it. And you can also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff like this. And yeah, guys, so hopefully we're going to have some fun little discussion in the comments. And I hope you have a rest of a great day, whatever day you're on. Alright guys, that's it. This is Niska. I am out.